You're listening to the Effective Statistician Podcast, the weekly podcast with Alexander Schacht and Benjamin Pieske designed to help you reach your potential, lead great science and serve patients without becoming overwhelmed by work. Today we are talking about tips for working from home as a statistician. It's an interview with Jürgen Hummel. Okay, maybe you're not working from home, maybe you have colleagues working from home, maybe at some point you will work from home. I think it's a growing trend and maybe you don't have a family yet, so maybe you don't have that much of a need, but I can tell you this interview will help you to understand whether that is something for you, whether that's not something for you and how you can make it happen and actually have fun with it, work effectively and get a much better balance between your working time and all the other things that you need to do. I'm not a big fan of work-life balance because that basically means that work is not life, but I do also enjoy work, so I don't like this kind of frame, but it helps you to, you know, manage lots of lots of different priorities um, maybe family maybe other things so i hope you will enjoy the show and if you do just do me a little little favor go to your colleague next desk or you know send a chat message to to your colleague about this podcast episode or maybe about this podcast in general so we can spread the work and the world help more statisticians be effective. The podcast is produced in association with PSI, which is a community dedicated to leading and promoting the use of statistics within the healthcare industry for the benefit of patients. Join PSI today to further develop your statistical capabilities with access to the ever-growing video-on-demand content library, free registration to all PSI webinars, and much, much more. The fees are just 20 pounds for non-high income countries, 95 pounds for high income countries. Of course, per year, not per month. So just visit the PSI website at psiweb.org and learn more about all the other things that are happening and just join. It's that simple. Welcome to another episode of The Effective Statistician. Today I'm talking with Jürgen Hummel uh, from uh, PPDI about working from home. That is a pretty hot topic because there's a lot of controversy about it, but there's a, it's, a, it's a trend that is getting more and more uh, traction and there's more and more people working from home, So, uh, especially also statisticians working from home. So... We are both quite experienced in that regard, and that's why we want to share a couple of thoughts and tips on this topic today. Let's welcome Jürgen. How are you doing? <laughs> very well. Thank you very much for inviting me, Alexander. <laughs> okay. Maybe you can give a little bit of an introduction of yourself and especially what's your past experience and uh, your life uh, as a statistician who's working from home. Yeah, of course. Now, um, as you can gather from my name, we're both fellow Germans, but I've spent my entire working life in the UK. So I started back in 1995 working at Procter and Gamble, and thereafter I spent the last 23 years working in different CROs and, and different places in the UK initially uh, around London and uh, mostly in, in Scotland now. So I, I started working from home back in 2006 when I moved to PPD and their office was about 60 miles away from home. And 60 miles was a distance that I felt that I couldn't really commute on a daily basis. And and I made the arrangement with my boss, who I knew from beforehand, that I could work from home two days a week. And back in 2006, that was not very common. And from there on, I've increased the amount of time that I work from home and I work from home most of the time nowadays. And it's been really interesting to see how the industry has evolved over that time as well, over the last 14 years. So, yeah. What about you, Alexander? 
Yeah, I actually started in the industry in 2002, and then I was working in the office pretty much all the time. And then also in about the time that, that uh, you mentioned, the, the uh, 25, 2005, 2006, I was getting more and more responsibilities on a, on a bigger scale and was working more, much more with international uh, people together. And so I had phone calls earlier in the morning and later in the evening. It was much more convenient to take these phone calls from home. So I was starting to work a little bit from home. And then gradually that got more and more and more with, uh, and also in the company it, uh, that I was working in, more and more people were working from home. And I didn't see the point in driving into the office just to pick up the phone for eight hours. So I said, well, then I can try just directly work from home and became more and more common. And now I'm working nearly exclusively from home. Uh, I'm, I'm going into different offices uh, across Europe on a, on a regular basis. But um, yeah, most of the time I'm working effectively from home because also the, my, my business partners are uh, distributed across the world, more or less. And so there is no specific office that would suit for me where I would see most of my uh, business partners. It's, uh, and I can't be in many places at the same time. So working from home is quite, quite nice. So but I think there is, on, on one hand, there is this trend for more and more working from home. But on the other hand, there's also still a concern both from the people that then work from home as well as from the people that, that supervise these people. What's your experience in that regard in, in terms of these concerns? And, and I think you're right. And, and definitely when I started working from home, I was the first one in, in our company in Europe who, who was given the ability to work from home. And there was definitely a bit of a perception that, yeah, somebody working from home, he might just sort of only spend a few hours doing proper work and the other time he's doing whatever else. Um, and I think building up that trust is clearly a key aspect there. And also that you um, let people know what you are doing because as a manager, you may have a concern that you can't really oversee exactly what the person is doing. So that clear and, and regular communication is so much more important important and not only just with your manager but also with your colleagues who may also have that similar perception that that person working from home isn't really pulling his weight in in the same way so i think you need to be a, a good communicator and and i think that needs to be from the person working from home as much as from the manager but what i think we've seen over the years much more is that we have a lot of managers working from home too, and, and that requires particular skills because you need to work in a different way with somebody working from home. You need to build up and maintain that trust. You need to be available and you need to be seen to be available. Yeah. Actually, when I got my first job as a supervisor, I had people in four different locations reporting to me. Mm -hmm. And so naturally, they were sitting in another, another office anyway. And whether they were sitting in the office or whether they were sitting at home, for me, it didn't make a really much of a difference as, as a supervisor. So I think it's the same things that, that apply to managing someone in another office applies to managing someone that is working from home. And uh, you can have the same techniques there in terms of you know regular check-ins which you should have anyway intentionally setting up time for for chats speaking about also not business related things because you don't have these usual chats at the coffee machine anymore so, so i think that's a couple of tips and tricks to help build the relationship and build the trust because i think in the end it's it's all about trust and trust is built over time from delivering on what you promise. And for me as a statistician, I think, or for us as a statistician, in the end, we need to deliver. It's, it's not about kind of, oh, I spend eight hours. Now I can, you know, drop the keyboard. <laughs> and uh, if, if the deliverable is not done, well, you need to get it done. Yeah. So, so in the end, it's... Yeah. 
it's all about getting things done. And it's, uh, I think it's less about making the hours. And, and you're absolutely right there. And and uh, by working from home, you alluded to that, your ability to join meetings that are early in the morning or late in the evening are much easier to accomplish. And, and therefore, by doing that, we become much more effective by working with different teams and other people in other locations. And, and therefore, our ability to really uh, get a job done is much better. And therefore... And and I think that's that's definitely one of the the flexibilities that make working from home more appealing is that by uh, being more flexible on the one hand with some of our our meetings, it makes it easier then to also be flexible on some of our own needs. So, for example, if I want to go for a run for an hour and a half at lunchtime, if there isn't much of another meeting, then that's much easier to do and 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 take some time back for myself too. Yeah, and also of course you save a lot of time commuting. Yeah, mm -hmm. and and my experience is that um, quite a big proportion of that time goes to the company work anyway. So, and I think it's much more productive to work at your office, even if your home office, so rather than you know driving a car or sitting in a tube. Therefore, I think that's that's another benefit. I think another benefit is actually that you can, as an employer, attract a much broader pool in terms of talents. Yeah, so, so whenever I interview people for, for a new job, the question of working from home is becomes much more kind of a, a standard expectation nowadays, isn't it? Absolutely. And, and I think it's, it, you're right. It, it's a much wider broad of people that you can attract to a job. If you if you don't restrict yourself to a hundred kilometer radius around a, a particular office, so for example at PPD we have offices in we've got three offices in the UK, but within mainland Europe we don't really have any offices with statisticians there. So what we've done is we've built up a virtual site of for home based statisticians that are now spread across many Central Euro Central and Eastern European countries, and to sort of therefore build up a, a virtual network of people who otherwise probably wouldn't have joined PPD and we wouldn't necessarily have employed them either. How does this virtual network look like? Is it do you have kind of events like where you would have on site events just virtual or how does it look like? So I'm I'm not part of that that network because within PPD we have a statistical science track and, and I head up that track and, and that's a bit separate. But from what I understand is it's exactly that that they have sort of almost like virtual coffee mornings too, where like they have a, a the ability to chat to somebody in, in a virtual setting because let's face it if you are working from home all the time and if you're not close to an office then building up that network of other people is not necessarily as straightforward just so to recognize that if trying to sort of create some of the the things to that we all have to get to know of our colleagues in a virtual way yeah Yeah. So I think the, the good thing is if you already have a network, so, so if you have already worked in the office for quite some time, it's much easier to start working from home. When I joined UCB, I went directly into the home office. But what is helping me is that I have regular trips to the different offices where, where I, I meet people. And of course, I use video quite heavily for, for all, all the different meetings. And that makes things also much, much easier because you can better build relationship by just seeing the other person. Of course, you know, seeing someone face to face is yet another topic, but, but mm. um, um, it helps. So do you think that you approached sort of started work, starting work in a UCB differently given that you were home based? I did certain things much more intentional. So more intentional in terms of uh, spending time with people when I'm actually in the office. Then I have pretty much back-to-back face-to-face meetings. When I'm then working from home, I have more, let's say, tasks do time. Yeah. So, and I think that is one of the nice things also from working from home. You can much easier get time where you are uninterrupted and where you can do cognitively demanding 
tasks for, for a long time. I start quite early in the morning and then I have a long time period where I can just review, for example, SAPs or protocols or where I can um, review manuscripts or where I can prepare a presentation or something like this. And when I was working in the office, especially when you don't have a single person office, quite rare, overall, it's really distracting. So, so especially in these open space offices, I can't really work productively in there. Yeah. So, so productively when I, you know, just need to do something, get done. If it's more about, well, answering emails and things like that, that's, that's fine. But, but if I really need to, dive deep into something and there's, you know, people going behind my back all the time and going, you know, chatting five meters away from me and there's uh, phone calls ringing and, and all these kind of different things. I find it pretty much impossible to do some uh, more cognitively demanding tasks. And, and I think you're right. I mean, I certainly felt that uh, when I started working from home that I could work a lot more productively in that way because I could choose to to really create the, the environment that I needed in order to do the work productively in a way that it's a lot harder to do in, in the office. You're, you're absolutely right on that. And the other thing that, that also resonated with me when you say that you, you choose to then um, spend more time with other people in the office. I, I still tend to go to the office once a week just because um, I find it's, um, it's a good way of maintaining the personal relationships with people that I don't necessarily work with on a day-to-day -day basis. And and I choose to, to chat to people more at the beginning of the day around lunchtime during breaks than I would normally do if I was in the office on, on a daily basis to therefore say, okay, I, I make a contact conscious effort to come to the office and therefore I make a conscious effort to make use of what the office environment brings to me. Yeah, completely agree. In terms of tasks that are especially suitable for working from home, what do you what are things that you choose for the working time from home versus the time in the office? You see, I I I used to sort of view it in that way and thinking, okay, I, I need to review a stats analysis plan. I, I work from home that day to do that. But because I work from home most of the time now, I don't really choose that. And I think I think that's also changed over time now because the uh, the, the the broadband speed has increased so much over those 14 years that I've been working from home that it doesn't really matter anymore in the same way. Whereas back in those days to try and do some SaaS programming and running programs uh, from home was really difficult. Even the access to the server was, was challenging. That's not really an issue anymore nowadays. So I don't really think that there is that much of an issue other than if you're trying to actually uh, take part in a meeting where the other people are together face to face. I think then being from home is harder because you can't really read the discussion in the same way as you are in, in the same room with people. I completely agree. If you work uh, part time from, from home, uh, then I think I would try to consciously make an effort to, to have some meetings more in the office time in the home time have more so the deep work like uh, reviewing SAP programming things like that where you can have a bigger chunk of time dedicated for that and then have a couple of interruptions to do some emails and, and things like this so some more, more shallow, uh, shallow work in terms of working from home you, you just mentioned that you can set up your working environment in such a way that it's uh, that you're most productive. So, so how does your work environment work? looked like at home <laughs> yeah so i've got a separate room that i've set up at my as my office and and i can close the door when i need the the, the piece and it, and it's and it, it's much easier to do it that way however i have over many years simply worked on a on a fold-up table in the living room whilst my children were at school and when they came back from school they then moved into uh, a little corner desk in in my bedroom so um i, I am used to sort of doing that in a makeshift way too but um it, it's a lot easier to have that set up with a proper phone to have that set up with a a, a two-screen monitor and all of that in a separate office and also to feel that 
this is the place that I can then sort of relax into and, and think. So um, it, it certainly is easier to do that way, but it's not a must in my view. Yeah, I also have a, a separate room for my office where I have all the different things. There's, of course, there's also a couple of other private office things like private finance and, and stuff like this in, 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 in this room, but it is a dedicated space just for office and um, the laptop is open i can just you know start it and directly get get into work without a lot of kind of setup things I have my i have also my second monitor here um, mouse and and uh, a different keyboard so that i have a little bit of a bigger keyboard and just the um, laptop one and of course the high speed internet connection that that helps a lot but i think it's It's really important to to have that room set up where you can close the door, especially if you have kids at home, because otherwise it gets really, really distracting. And I even have a little sign at the door in terms of do not disturb when I have things where I don't want my family to, to come in. Like, for example, this uh, recording today. <laughs> um, I just turn the sign on and then say, well. And, and I think you're right. And, and, and having that separate environment makes that a lot easier to, to achieve. But I think it's, it's an interesting aspect that you also mentioned that I think it's also helpful to have a physical separation between your work life and your home life because there's sometimes a tendency, and I've seen that in some of my colleagues, colleagues to to therefore have not really much of a distinction between the the working hours and and your normal hours and people then often check their emails on a daily basis in, until late at evening and and I'm not sure that that's a particularly good practice and I don't think there should be an expectation that people do that just because they, they work from home so to make a sort of conscious effort this is the end of my working day my work is done I'll switch that off now and and I and I now need to try and and sort of switch off from work in a way that our commute home from from the office would otherwise be and, and try and find a consciously an activity that helps helps with that winding down so that our brain doesn't constantly stay in work mode. I completely agree. For that reason, I also have a business phone and a private phone so that in the evening I leave my business phone on my desk and then uh, I just have my private phone so I can't read any business emails and things like that because otherwise it's just too tempting to just quickly check something and then then you're yeah you're never disconnected and um, mm -hmm. i had said for quite some time i had uh, just one phone and that was really really bad especially in the evenings and i completely agree having some kind of winding down practice is really helpful i have three little kids so they you know directly completely grab my attention when i'm <laughs> <laughs> leaving my home office so, so uh That helps with winding down <laughs> very, very well. But if you don't have that, then um, doing something that consciously brings you down is, is uh, probably very, very good. Yeah. I mean, my children have left home now they're 20 and 22 um so i do uh, I, i use gardening or, or cooking in order to sort of do some manual tasks that that help to get me out of my my head but you're right um having children around definitely makes that switching off very easy <laughs> <laughs> yep in terms of discussing rules with the uh, family How did you manage that with, with the families that, you know, they're not constantly coming into, into the room, interrupting you for, for all kind of little things like, um, whatever. Yeah. What, what kids are asking for? <laughs> can, you, can you help me with my homework now? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, obviously, it, it, it depends on what age your children are. And um, the, the older they are, the more understanding they, they tend to be. So, yes, I, I think you need to recognize the, the needs of your family, of your partner, of your children. And you need to, therefore, uh, make time for them, too. But And I think in, in a similar way, when they see that you make time for them, uh, when you do have the time, they find it a lot easier to then sort of leave you undisturbed when, when you need to, to concentrate on something else as well. I don't know, what rules do you tend to play for that? So I have, uh, we have this rule that when I have my headset on, 
Uh, so they may kind of, you know, open the door a little bit and, and uh, look into the room. And when they see I have my headsets on, that means um, do not disturb. So they may enter the room and get something out of the room, but it's very, very quiet. But otherwise, uh, then uh, if I don't have my headsets on, then I'm usually happy to be shortly interrupted. But it's, I think it, it's then it's clear that the expectation is just kind of for yeah, for more emergency kind of things. Yeah, mm. so, so I can't find my books and I need to go to school now or things like that. Yeah, but not for uh, daddy, do you have time to play? Yeah, so, <laughs> so that's, um, uh, there's some clear expectation. And we also had, you know, discussions about that and uh, intentionally had some, some set some boundaries uh, around that. And I think the expectation setting is really, really important. I think it's very much so, yeah, and and I think it's it's with your partner as well because um so I I certainly would say that it, it was an adjustment for for my ex wife as well t- for me to be around uh, a lot more because the space that otherwise had been mostly hers during the day was suddenly then a shared space. So I, I think it's it's definitely a, a setting of expectation with everybody that you share your home with. Completely agree. What other tips do you have in terms of working from home? So I would say um, I personally think that working from home does not work for everybody in the same way. I personally think that um, that there are some sort of aspects of, of who you are that make it easier. So, for example, I, I think it, it helps to be self-motivated. I think it helps to be a good communicator. And, and and I think it's important that that you ask yourself what is my what is important for me for my, my working environment, because I, I have seen it that people have gone working from home and it didn't really work out for them. So ask yourself and be honest: is that something that I think would work from me in the first instance? And and if if not sure, then maybe try it out for a bit before then sort of throwing yourself fully into that. Yeah, I completely agree. And I think the, the mindset topic is a really, really important one. So that if you're working from home and you're going into, into your desk, you also need to come with that. I'm now working. For example, I never work in pajamas or something like this. So, so I'm always completely kind of pressed up and, and things like that because I also want to turn on the video camera. Well, in pajamas, mm. that would be a little bit <laughs> funny. <laughs> but I hear that sometimes. Yes, I said, uh, colleagues say, uh, yeah, I'm not, you know, didn't do my hair or whatever. So, so um, or the, the environment here in the, where I'm sitting is, is not good looking. So I don't want to turn on the camera. I think that's not a good good habit so so i think you need to get into this mindset okay this is now working time so i do everything as i would usually do when i go into the office yeah maybe you don't wear a tie mm-hmm. but but well that's maybe anyway not that common anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no i think we've moved on from those days in in most offices anyway you're right but but it is good to have the mindset that i am working now rather than sort of um, sort of half drifting asleep and, and therefore y- you switch on your laptop and, and you're not really sure how well your brain's working yet. So I think I think having some clear boundaries for, for yourself probably helps and, and having a structure to the day in, in a similar way as if it was in the office it certainly helps me too. Yeah. So so like you talked about kind of the winding up down ritual, I also have a starting day ritual. Yeah. So mm. so, I, so what's your ritual for that? <laughs> I get my uh, espresso, I get something, some water to drink, and then I turn on the laptop, look into my notebook, look into the, my goals, check the calendar and uh, write down what are the top three tasks for today. And what are kind of the other to do's? Yes, and I try to directly work on some top tasks directly, and that gets me motivated and going. And then I'm also it's it's a it's a ritual that I'm doing every morning, and that helps me also to to get into this work mode quite easily. 
It's the same like when you, you know, you have this ritual when you get into the office as well. Yeah, so, so you grab a coffee at the coffee machine, you turn on your PC, you maybe chat shortly to your office neighbor, and, and uh, then you get going. And um, having something similar at home is really helps you to ease into the day and, and to uh, be directly productive. Yep, I find that too. And and that sort of time at the beginning of the day to to sort of almost orientate myself, what is today about and what do I need to check and, and um, do I have lots of meetings or not? I think it's something that I find very useful to do before the hectic of the day takes over. And I feel I am more in control of what I'm doing than otherwise. And that is easier to achieve within the control of a, of a home office than being in the office. Yeah. And also, I usually always start at the same time. So it's when the kids leave for school, I directly start with the office and I don't do anything kind of in between. Uh, mm. so, so, so that I think that also helps to have a kind of strict rules that you apply to that you start at a certain time in the morning because of course if you're working from home there is oh maybe i'm sleeping in a little bit today or whatever but but it's um it's good to have a clear starting time uh, as well as a clear, <laughs> clear ending time i i i use that too then the it's interesting what you say that you don't do anything in between um I, i'm a bit different there because the sort of almost task that okay i've concentrated on something now for an hour i, I need to stretch my legs i maybe put on the washing machine and uh, and and then sort of do that task and get some of the tasks done in the house that otherwise i would spend doing in the evening so um it can work for me too to get some of the chores out of the way without that really disrupting my working day yeah i use that as well so so um especially these small tasks like uh, loading the washing machine which just takes three minutes it's uh, but it helps a lot <laughs> because uh, the, the washing machine can do their work while i'm working as well um rather than in the evening and it's a it's a nice mental short mental break mm. and uh to get up from your office like you know in the office you would go to the coffee machine or whatsoever uh, as a short little break. And um, yeah, I, I have a similar breaks, but maybe a little bit more productive. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> I have my, what's also a really nice benefit is that I have really proper good coffee at home. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, that's very important. I mean, it's it's interesting you mentioned your espresso in the morning. I, my absolute ritual is my espresso at lunchtime. And uh, yes, I don't have that in the office. <laughs> <laughs> okay, very good. We covered lots of lots of different tips and tricks and thoughts about uh, home office today. So, so we started with talking about the different concerns. We talked about that not everybody is probably suitable for working from home and that it uh, takes a lot of trust at the beginning. But that trust is something that you need to build anyway, especially if your supervisor doesn't sit in the same office like you anyway. So we also talked about a couple of different tips and, and that setting boundaries and having a clear expectations both within the company but also within your family helps to be productive working from home and that's still good from time to time to be in the office to uh, see people face to face and uh, if you're starting to work from home it's quite nice to maybe try it out first and ease into it rather than to completely directly jump into it and then to uh, completely dedicate your time to it so Jürgen any final advice you can give to our listener no it's um it, it's certainly great that today's technology enables that as an option in a way that it wasn't there say 20 30 years ago and it's it's great that it uh uh, it, it gives an additional ability to perform our job in a way that wasn't there before. I very much enjoyed having that. I don't think I would have built up the same 
relationship with my children if I hadn't done that for many of those years. And I don't think I would have been able to contribute to my work in the same way as productively either. So I feel that it brought me a great balance and I'm grateful that that, that option was there for me. Yeah, I completely agree. And um, yeah, it also helps to for the companies because there's lots of companies that don't allow that. I think they miss out. They can't attract me <laughs> and probably lots of others. Okay, thanks so much for this discussion and talk to you next week where we will have another episode of the Effective Statistician. And thanks so much, Jürgen, and um, have a nice time. Bye-bye. Thank you. This show was created in association with PSI. Thanks to Rain, who helps with editing and lots of lots of other things of this show in the background. Thank you for listening. And thank you already for maybe sharing it with someone else. I just, I hope you do that. And it would be really awesome if you could help others like I help you hopefully with this podcast. If you want to learn more about the podcast, just go to theeffectivestatistician.com where you can find the show notes and many, many, many other episodes. We have now more than 100 episodes there. And if you're new to that, there's probably some that you really would like to listen to. Okay, that's it. So as always, reach your potential, lead great science, and serve patients. Just be an effective statistician.